It's always so right. fucking funny. We'll kick it off. We got Sean Mills and Joe Wee here. This is Sean's second time on the podcast. Joe's first time. Yep. If you don't know Joe, he's been in the gym a while. He's also buddies with Sean. When did you guys meet? Give him a little background yeah, first. You can give him the rundown, honestly. Yeah, so I met Sean, I think, right before freshman year of college. So it's like, what, three, four years ago? Yeah. Um, we had a mutual friend. I saw him at a party. And uh, my friend had actually mentioned him before. He said, I had this friend, Wheeze. He squats like 500 pounds, deadlifts 600 pounds or whatever. In my head, I had like this like forty year old bald dude. In my head. <laughs> Is he the fuck's um, name to Weez? Yeah, kind of yeah I was that, like, I thought Weez was like an old head kind of nickname. Yeah. yeah. And then I met him, and he was just like a seventeen year old kid, like my age, and I was like, oh, wait, this is the kid. Um, and then we kind of we hit it off. We started talking about lifting. Started talking about sneakers. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then I think it was like the first day I got to Penn State. He saw me at the gym, and he texted me and was like. Yo, were you at the gym? Like, come in a bench workout with us. And then ever since then, like, nice. just been with each other every day. Just so you guys, I, I honestly assumed you guys were, like, high school bros. Like, right. yeah. so it was before that. Or it was, like, right after high school going into college. Yeah, yeah it was yeah. Really yeah. right before. going into it. Yeah. Shit. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and then uh, Joe's been a member at the gym for a while. Obviously, you guys already know kind of the background on Sean. But you guys have also now kind of gotten into, like, the content game, which I want to I wanna touch on as well. I would definitely am. I'm stoked that Joe's on the podcast because you seem like a multi-talented individual at this <laughs> Dude, point. Dude, this kid can do Ooh. anything. I'm yeah. yeah. Like, I, I mean, like, he obviously trains strong, getting into, like, a little bit of the bodybuilding aspect now. Yep. Yep. Fucking lateral raise God is what yeah. I call him. <laughs> I was just doing it right I know. I was see you doing him again. <laughs> yeah, I was grunting with like, him. <laughs> Joe is always doing fucking lateral raises. Yeah. But, uh. No, yeah, and I know you guys do a little bit of the crypto thing. Mm-hmm. Now Joe got in the content game, and yep. I mean, we might as well just dive right into that, just because yeah, I want to make right. I want to make a point to talk about kind of how you got into it, which was kind of unique, but at the same time, I feel like it's like you did it how you're supposed to do it, right? Like, yeah, yeah. just tell people kind of like how you how you got into it, what you did in order to kind of gain some of the experience that you now have. Yeah, so like. For me, it was a very interesting because, like, obviously, Sean, I was with Sean as he grew and everything and on social media. But me personally, I never liked, like, the whole social media thing. I never really posted. I never did any of that. Never posted. Um, Once a year. Yeah, yeah like, I, I posted very, very, Once a year yeah, yeah, very, very slightly. Um, but, like, this past summer, going into senior year of college, like, that's the time when everyone kind of has, like, their internships and everything. And I knew for me that I didn't really want to go – that route and so the question became like then what route do you take right (laughs) um and so I figured that social media could be a route and so I was like let me kind of dive into it but I don't want to just be doing the things that everyone else is doing and which is why I picked up a camera Mm -hmm. and so over the summer I was like I set a goal for myself. I actually did it with Sean and another one of my friends. We had like a hundred days where we were gonna absolutely like grind and like like set out goals for ourselves and hit them every single day. Um, We had like a- We had had an Excel sheet. Yeah, we had an Excel sheet that we would like write down our schedules and like what we did that day and everything. Different tasks and whatnot. Yeah. 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 Everything, Um, macronutrients, hours of sleep, everything. Damn. (laughs) So like at first for me, it was like just, like I was cutting weight, so it was like lose weight, uh, like practice like piano or whatever. It was like little goals in here and there, but then I decided to also pick up the camera and I decided the best way to learn is like do it every single day mm-hmm. because I thought about it and it was like the first initial goal may have been like one video a week or something like that, but that ends up being 52 videos in a year. But if I were to do it every single day, I can fit – 100 videos into three months time um and so that's what i did essentially i made a video every single day using the camera and the goal was that throughout that kind of process and people watching me you can see my progress and you can see where i started and where i ended and it ended up going well so like by the end of the 100 days i think i really improved um, it kind of burnt me out a little bit, but I'm like, definitely, I feel I mean, good about it now. No, I, I think you, I, I could see the improvements like on a daily basis. I was yeah. like, damn, like every <laughs> single day is like a little bit of a different element to it. Mm-hmm. And they were like short. You could, you know, you could tell you like made it realistic too. Like, yeah. it's not like you were putting together fucking five minute long, like 
you know, stories about whatever. It was like, what, 60 seconds, right? Like yeah, less yeah. than 60 Not seconds. Even. Most Sometimes of them, I, even. yeah, most yeah. of them I would try to keep under like 10 seconds, like 10 to 20. And even like, that, you could literally see like daily progression, like weekly for sure. And it was you very just, watchable content. 100%. Very watchable. Very watchable. Yeah. It was kind of like those daily vlog. The mini mm. version daily vlogs, yep. like, yeah. I thought it was sick, and it was just good to see, like, you you talked to me a little bit about some of the stuff, so I kind of mm. had a little bit of background info, but, like, you could see you were, like, you made it a point to get the experience, and now I'm only seeing you, like, a year later, however long it was been, you, mm. it's been, like, now you're, like, offering out services. Like, mm -hmm. you actually developed the skill. Yeah. You didn't go buy the camera and be like, now I'm qualified. Like, yeah, I, I hate that have, shit. I hate yeah, that shit. I know. It's shit. crazy. So, I'm like. That's actually, I love that you said that because for me, that is the biggest thing. Like, people, the amount of people I see who, like, let's just take the camera example. They buy a camera and then they're like, the moment they're like, oh, my stuff is good enough. They're like, on their stories, it's like, I have spots open. I have spots open. Come work with me. Come work with me. Blah, blah, blah. My mentality was, I'm going to work until my skill gets so good that people come to me mm -hmm. and that what payment means is people always want my work and I can't afford to do that with everyone. So I need to put up payment so that I can kind of filter it down. Mm -hmm. Like that was kind of my mindset going into yeah. it. So Supply like, and demand. Holy exactly. Shit. So like uh, when I was doing the camera work, the biggest thing, and I tell this to other people trying to get into it. I just walked around the gym, went to the posing room, and I was like, hey, you want photos? Like, I'll give them for free. Mm -hmm. Did that a bunch, and then once I got into videos, I was like, hey, you want to make a video together? Yeah. I just did that over and over again until now I'm at where I'm at, which I still think is, like, very, very beginning. Like, I just started charging for video shoots. Um, yeah. So I think a year from now, I'll be in a oh, way different Yeah, a whole nother level. Yeah, but, like, it that's how you do it, though, is, like, yeah. Get the experience. I remember. I still remember seeing the post where it was like, "You're like, I'll shoot photos for free." I, I remember like at the meet, you're like, "Yeah, I just want to shoot some people. Like, is it cool if I just shoot some people?" I'm like, by all means, like I love it. Like the way that you did it is like, that's. I couldn't recommend that more to people. It's like do something that you want to do for free because not only are you offering value to somebody else who potentially comes a, becomes a client someday. They're offering you value by just being a subject to shoot yeah. and make content with. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. Like, if you don't have that, you can't kind of get better at what you're trying to get better exactly. at. Exactly. So. It's like, it's not, I, I don't, like, I don't need to charge someone $20. Like, I don't need $20 from you. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah. let me just work with you. Like, yeah. let's have a good time. Let's make a connection. I'll get better. You get some cool photos out of it. Yep. And then. That's it. Win-win. That's win -win it. Deal. Yeah. Like, that's, that's kind of how it is. You yeah. Know what I mean? I always bring up Sue with this topic as well because Sue came around about a year ago. He was doing his thing somewhat. He was at another gym kind of making some pretty cool content. For some reason, I think, like, David wasn't able to be at a shoot. We were having, like, some type of small event, smaller event. And, David, I think you might have even recommended Sue. You're like, I don't know, this dude looks pretty good. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and he's so like, you know, said, I saw him before anyone knew him. No, yeah, it was very early on. I think it was like two months in us, this gym being open. Like, yeah. It was like a scout. Yeah. <laughs> Scouted him out, dude. Holy and shit. And he just happened to be at the gym. Like, I think I like read David's message. He's like, this, you know, maybe like see if he's available. He happened to be in the gym, talked to him at the front desk, and I was like, yo, like, I know this is crazy last minute. Is there any way you can like come tomorrow and like shoot this thing? I, mean, I can't remember what it was for. He's like, yeah, no problem. Like, didn't even want payment. He's like, ah, oh, I'll just show up and do it. And, like, I'm, I'm usually I'm like, no, I want to pay you. Like, yeah, nothing's yeah, yeah. free, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah, right? But he, he was, like, adamant. He's like, no, nah, I'm just going to do this, which <laughs> did stand out. I was like, all right, this dude just clearly showing he wants to get involved. Right, right, right. Crushed it. And then now he's literally, like, creative director of the brand. Yeah, Like, yeah, in yeah. a year's time. You yeah, know what I mean? Yeah, it's yeah, like, yeah. that's how you do it. And what, Offer value. And right. then you're going to have opportunities that mm -hmm. just literally come to you. And when was this exactly? This was less. This has to be less than a year, yeah. Because the gym only hit a year, and all. Eh, it, maybe we're coming up on a year now. I think actually Sue did mention something about like his year mark here. Just literally like as in entering into the gym for the first yeah, time yeah, was yeah. about a year ago. So uh, about a reason. year ago, yeah. Because I remember when I saw his first stuff. I think it was in uh, between like January and uh, no, 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 no. It was actually like it had to be like November, December of. Uh, 
2021. Yeah. So, like, last year. Yep. And I remember seeing his content, and I just remember seeing a bunch of people tag him and uh, Power Build stuff, or, like, when they tagged Power Build, they would use his stuff. And um, I just remember about his content, he had a very distinct look. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's much cooler temperatures, much darker aesthetic. Yep. Very, very unique to him. Yeah. You know? And um, I just remember seeing that, and... I was going back through his stuff, and like he was always good. You know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. he was from the second I saw his stuff. Like he's come a long way, uh, like since now or since then yeah. until now. But he was always good. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? And so I came back for winter break, and I'm like, yeah, I want to, I want to work with this guy. You know, because I feel like his aesthetic would buy very well with my persona on social yeah. media. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So. Yeah, very talented. And that's guy. when you made like the 727 squat video, so the, right? So the 738 squat 738. video. 738. Yeah, my, yeah, yeah. my bad. My bad. <laughs> <laughs> I had to, I had to you work out the five kilos. Yeah, my bad. I need the five kilos. <laughs> no, but yeah, no, that kilos. was uh, that was during winter break, and uh, I was visiting down south, and then I came back, and it was like my biggest week of training that I. That was actually the heaviest week of training that I ever had ever. Like yeah. even till now, <laughs> uh, I have not topped those numbers since. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like. It was all during that one week here at Power Build. It's when I tapped out at 738. Didn't you hit like 460 I did hit squat, 463. Bench, bench. I did hit 463 on bench on, on a fat pad after Junior Nationals. Yeah. I think I just peaked late. I don't know how the fuck I did that. I don't think I – like that was just a one-off day. But, um, yeah, so that one week I came back during January – um, was the week I, saw, I shot with Sue for the first time, and he narrated that, or he did that 738 squat. Yeah. And that video is just, like, so Sick. iconic. Sick. Just, like, all the vibes, everything yeah. about that video is immaculate. You were behind me spotting me when, like, you were the first person that ever, like, I knew from powerlifting. So it was just, like, a real, like, full circle moment in the sense where, like, I had the person that – was the first person to ever acknowledge me back squatting me for uh, a new PR like this. And then all my homies were around me spotting me as well. And it was up to me to get that motherfucking weight. And I did it. You yeah, know what I mean? no, it was I just still, badass. that's when I remember like seeing the video for the first time and being like, all right, this motherfucker is different. Like it was just like different vibe. Everything I, was crazy. I haven't seen like that style. No, just everything. And like now you, now you're starting to kind of see like people mimic that. Dude, oh, you, start you know what yeah. I mean? Oh, like, yeah, the pro it. mist. The pro <laughs> mist filter is what everyone here uses now. And yeah. that's because of Sue. Yeah. yeah. And I know it is. No, yeah, for sure. And so I made it a point. I said, I'm never using that yeah. while I'm here. While yeah, I'm here, yeah, I'm yeah. not using it. I think, <laughs> yeah, but so it's, it's interesting to kind of see, like, the dynamic, you know, mm -hmm. of just, like, the different styles and how people can kind of use it, spin it on their, you know, spin it into their own style. Because, like, I feel like I do see some of, like, the people that are here, you you kind of have like you have your own look too now, and it's he does, like, he does. but I do see some of the Sue trend and like even like David, like some of the stuff that they've done. Like I could see you've absorbed some of that. Yeah, yeah of course. You know what I mean? Which is my, just a yeah. compliment to the people that we have here and yeah, as yeah, a whole. Yeah. But no, my biggest thing is like I started off on YouTube, like learning the basic stuff from YouTube, but everything else since then has been watching other people like sean as his editor uh aunt mm -hmm. i watch that's where i get a like a lot of where i learn from sue is also huge yeah um there's just whatever i see on instagram and i like it i'm like let me try and do that and then once i do that i'm like okay now i can try something a little different that no 100 try something a little different like, all right we got Jeff here. Good. Jeff's in the house. How? <laughs> Let's get him a chair. Let's get him a chair. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like you said, once you start putting that work in, it just it, it creates itself. Yeah, and like yeah. you said, taking from, I feel like you made a good point about how you said like you look at other people's stuff, you look to to like reiterate it first, and then you like create your own like path yeah, yeah, with yeah. it. I mean, that's as original as a gift. Like it's going to be similar to somebody. You're going to have like people you looked up to, people that you know what I'm saying you yeah. looked at and was like, damn, they work kind of good. I want to kind of you know replicate it, and then you start finding your own originality in it. So exactly, it's only like, it got to be done. If you like the way something looks, like if something looks good, and then you can you can replicate it, then your stuff's gonna look good. One hundred percent, one hundred percent. Dude, I don't think people like understand, and I'm I'm trying to let you guys know for the people that follow me that may know of Joe, but, like, they don't know Joe like that because nah, he's bro. just always there with me. But, like, this motherfucker can, can do anything. I'm telling you, right, <laughs> he can literally do anything. Aside from anything strength-related between he and I, <laughs> anything that I've had the edge on him or I've been better than him at, he's – he's and we've been competitive because, like, we've been best friends for the past, like, four or five years. And – um so, like, we're just together every single day because we were at Penn State. So, yeah. we just did things together and, like, we just had the same hobbies and whatnot. Any single thing that I used to be better than him at, he either 
matched or exceeded with time. And he just learned <laughs> how to become better at it. Like when it comes to, uh, literally when it comes to Fortnite, like, sorry, I'm gonna say it. <laughs> you, were the, you were always better than me at COD, but then, like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. like photography, videography, editing. And then he's just like, I don't know. He just has the smarts to learn shit. And then he just does it. Like Listen. if you throw a task at him, he can just do it like with time. He'll, he'll just do it. My, my thing is always like, I, I, I said, like, I think we talk talking about this where we both kind of say we have a very, like, addictive personality. Yeah. And, like, for me, when I say that, it's, like, if I get introduced to something and I like it, I'm going to beat out everyone else around me that I know. Yeah. Like, like, he was giving some examples, but, like, even very small things, like, like, I played poker for the first time, nonstop watched poker <laughs> until I beat <laughs> all of my friends. Yeah. I literally sophomore year. You take year, all of our money. Sophomore, all of our money. Sophomore all year, it. it paid off all my groceries. And like, <laughs> just for the entire it, year, paid off all his groceries <laughs> with poker money. Like, what are That's we talking insane. about And here? it's like, even like very, like, you could take that and then like, even like, if we're talking about like, shows or like TV shows, like, I was always away from like Game of Thrones mm. and then my, my friends started watching it so I'd start watching it with him. And then I was like, oh, okay, I'm going to watch it. So then bef- he was on, like, season five when I started. I, like, finished it before he finished it. What and the then fuck? I was on YouTube <laughs> looking at everything about the books, everything about everything, and just <laughs> learned the entire, like, everything about it. Yeah. And, like, I kind of – I find hell? that I do that with, like, everything. Yeah. Um, or at least what I'm interested in. And, like, so, I don't know. I feel like it leads to being, like, kind of well-rounded. So, like – Listen, I, I knew it was real. Good. We was in Houston, right? And like we were at uh we were at weigh ins before the meet and Joe's like shooting shit, just getting content. Bro, like literally before the meet we were like, yo, it's probably a good idea to just go back to the crib and just like sit down again. Bro, we start watching TV. Joe walks right to the computer, starts plugging shit in, just starts editing. I'm yeah. like, yo, what? Yeah. And we just, like he just recorded the shit. Like, he already here. He's already here. He like, y'all finished it. We'll finish the rest when we get back. I'm yeah. like, see? That's the different. key. He's a killer. Like, he's that's different. The, that's yeah. literally the difference. <laughs> I always tell different. this story, too. When I was fucking around with, like, the, the Warhouse and, like, Run Everything Labs, when we would go to, like, shows, Olympia, something like that, Lobo. Shout out to Lobo. Do you know Lobo at all? Lobo, oh, films. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Lobo films, disgusting, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. disgusting. I use like, his a lot. The go. I actually don't know him. Yeah, dude. Yeah, I need he's to good. There's levels, and he's at the fucking highest yeah. level. But <laughs> he would literally shoot all day. He'd be at the like say Olympia, shooting all day, doing everything. Literally ten hour days. As soon as we would get back, we go train the whole group training. He gets all that. As soon as we get back to the house. Motherfucker don't even talk. Headphones are on. He's in some back room fucking editing right away. I'm like, God damn. Yeah. I'm like, this motherfucker's different. I'd be like, battery, bro. I try and battery get him to come out and be like, bro, come, just come chill for a minute. No. He even look at me, man. He's <laughs> doing his thing. Yeah. I was like, okay. Dude, your, your video I made, I made using his luck. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, <laughs> like, um, no, these videographers and the reason why uh, content creation is so uh, competitive now, and there's so many of them, but the people who are at the top are at the top, it's because the people at the top are killers. Yeah, yeah, bro. And they put all that shit on the line for that shit. You know what I'm saying? In the sense where, like, dude, when we... So, in November, GBT dropped, like, two times, and uh, it was, like, two drops pretty much back-to-back within the span of three weeks. And uh, just all that, there was just so much content that needed to be edited. We had like, between the two different drops, we had maybe six different shoots, uh, 30 different IG reels and TikToks, um, uh, flat lays of every single product from every single launch. Um, I was just impressed. Other things as well. I was like, what the fuck, the racing drop just came out? <laughs> yeah, they already got like, no, the golf thing. like, it made me feel like shit, honestly. I'm like, we fucking suck. <laughs> I'm like, these motherfuckers are doing everything. <laughs> like, like, these drop, guys drop, are editing drop. around the clock nonstop. Yeah. And they, they just... They just don't stop. They go into a dark room, they put headphones on, and then they just bang it out for it takes hours. Yeah. Out days. It takes days. You gotta think, man. These dudes are like experienced, so if it's taking hours, just think about how much content that it's listen. So much content. I edited my first YouTube video. It took me two and a half hours. <laughs> Like, four weeks later, I edited another one of the same length. It took me 30 minutes. So, yeah. imagine getting that good and it's still taking yes, hours. Like, yes. That shit is crazy. I'm telling you, like, the Dude. people who are at the top are killers. Like, LT as well, uh, Joe Latona, killer. Yeah. Dude. Because, like, he literally came from the fucking gutter working construction in New York City. And then uh, made the leap of faith, moved to an Airbnb in... Um, in Houston with like three other guys and he just started shooting content and now he's like the head of content for Young LA. Like, did it in a year, crazy, year and bro. a half. That's crazy. You know what bro. I mean? Like, these, the people at the top are killers, man, I'm telling you. Dude, like, Aaron. Yeah, Aaron was, Rivera. He was, 
This guy, like, he's he's also one of the guys I really look up to in terms of videography. He was he was prepping for a powerlifting meet while doing his nursing thing, while prepping for like a nursing exam on top of editing nonstop for like the GBT stuff. I'm like, yeah. I, I don't I don't yeah. know how you do I'm yeah. like Jeez. I don't like, know how you do that. Like I'm, telling, <laughs> like, I'm telling you, there's like a big misconception out there where um I think people just think that we post pictures of T-shirts that we print and then uh, slap our name on a pair of shorts mm -hmm. and we just put it out there and then we make we make our money. But like people don't understand how much work goes into that shit. Yeah. Oh yeah, so much work. It's crazy. Like yeah, Dude, merch is so fucking hard. I try to tell people that all the time. Like and we fucking suck. <laughs> and I'm like, these mother. Here, we're trying. No, like no, we're no. slowly. Yeah, like we're just, we're slowly moving forward. But yeah. it's like it is so hard just to like. The planning, like just as far as like getting in the merch, planning yes. what merch you're going to be yes. getting, designs, planning the content after all that stuff yes. is figured out. Like there, there's so many levels to it. Like the fucking, there's 10 levels to it. And, and especially it's just, when you're moving a fuck ton of volume. Yeah, like, are oh. you, dude, it, it's like, there's a lot that goes into it. Like yeah. a lot. So like the shit that we do is not easy. No. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, it's fun and I love it. And like. Is what I'm passionate about, so I don't truly feel like I'm working. I feel like I'm work. I'm hanging out with a bunch of friends and making something cool, but um, like the week of Black Friday was one of the hardest times I ever had to work. Like I, I was just working not around the clock for like three days, and um, I maybe slept like maybe eight hours over the course of three days, and uh, I like didn't eat because I was just working. I was just so busy. Like I lost eight pounds over the course of three days. I slept like eight hours yeah it's just like you're, there's gonna be times and especially when you're running a business like and i know you can speak on this but like running a business is not easy by any means you know what i'm saying so many layers yeah it's not like you just it's not easy you know yeah. what i'm saying like there's so much bullshit behind the scenes yeah. there's so much stuff that goes into it that's what it's all the behind the scenes yeah stuff. that's the but shit nobody that people sees don't that. see yeah nobody sees it you know and like yeah. even for example when i plan out like uh like the way we want to shoot a product or how we want to market it and it doesn't come out exactly how I wanted to, like in the in the beginning, or like at the end. Um, like maybe it amounts to like eighty percent of what I wanted it to be, or like an eight out of ten. Um, and people see it and they're like, "Oh, this is great," because like that's just the first thing they're seeing. But like they don't even know that like that's not even like we're like we're not even happy with that, and we put that much work into it. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like people don't understand how much goes into all that. Oh yeah, that's the, it's it's so much harder than people think. That's why whenever somebody like. You know, I'll get people that come up to me. They want to, like, start a clothing brand. They want to start a gym. They want to start something. I'm like, you're talking about all the shit that, like, isn't even going to matter. It's not even going to be the stuff that holds you up. Like, <laughs> yeah. if you want to get into that, we're going to have to fucking sit down. I'm going to charge you for my time. Yeah, it's like, yeah, yeah. No, it's literally, crazy like, real. how much goes into it. Like, yeah. whether it's clothing, gym, even, even as, like, a content creator. Like, if you want to, like, actually run a business as a content creator and you're going to be, like, somebody who's, like, even freelancing, like, getting your shit together as far as, like, keeping track of clients, keeping track of who's paying the invoice and who's not. I know David's always big on paying the invoice. Like, there's <laughs> oh, so oh, many right, little right, things right, that, like, people invoice, just man. think you're just, like, what, what I'm going to make money and it's going to be easy. Oh, oh, really? Oh, shit. Oh, man, you... oh really? Oh, I'll tell him. <laughs> <laughs> I'll oh, tell him. Oh, God. Gonna get a nice little yell. Uh, he's he's good for it. Yeah. But no, yeah, there's a lot of just a lot of the nitty gritty that like yeah. you don't really hear people talk about. Like you don't. you don't. It doesn't even matter the category you're in. The shit is crazy. There's so many different layers to businesses, and that's why it's like most people dive in with just an unrealistic expectation of like they're gonna just do this and make money. I'm gonna get these shirts made. And I'm gonna make money. No, no. And that's no, you're why not. you're gonna probably lose fail. money. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, it's crazy. I mean. Just a segue, we already kind of got into it, but like now that you're down in Houston, is it like what you expected? Is it not? Is it is it better, worse, in between? What do you think? Um, you know, it's a very interesting question because um, my end goal, if you asked me when uh, right before I started college, when I realized about like what powerlifting was and the people in it and uh, the brands behind it. I always knew that I wanted to end up uh, in Houston, work, was combining fitness and business somehow. Like, I don't know what that was going to be, who, what it was going to be a part of, who was going to be involved, what it was going to look like. I ain't know. But that was my goal. And um, since then, I, I had made that happen, you know? And, um, like, my goal with the, – the, the reason I initially went to Texas was because I was going to be there on summer internship. And I planned to come back after three months um, based off of, like – 
like even if things went well, I was just gonna come back, finish out my last year of school. And so we release uh, our first summer drop, Summer 1.0, and it does really well and it, it exceeds all expectations. We hit like new record highs and everything. And so then late July comes around and um, I'm met with a full-time job offer. And yeah, Russ offered me a full-time position and a full-time salary working down there. And I thought to myself, okay, well, I've kind of already found myself, my spot in this company as uh, managing the athletes and um, the head of marketing. But um, like I have my spot for me down here and if I leave for it or if I leave it to go back to school, someone else is gonna have to fill those roles. You know what I'm saying? Because like that job's gonna have to be done somehow by somebody. So if I leave here, and I go back to school, then when I come back or when I graduate, I'm not gonna have the same, Goodbye. I'm not gonna have the, yeah, I'm not Bye. gonna have the position. Like, yeah, yeah, the like, train <laughs> keeps on moving, yeah, that's the yeah, thing. Yeah, it's like, like, no one, no on. one's yeah. waiting for you. Man. No one's fucking waiting no for me, waiting life for always goes on. So I'm like, okay, well if I go back to school and finish out these last, I don't know, fucking 24 credits, like two semesters worth of classes, then, uh, I'm gonna miss out my job when I get down here. And uh, prior to entering college, I told myself that I wanted to end up in Houston. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So like, I'm here in Houston now, I'm making money, why would I leave? You know what I'm saying? So like, God forbid everything just, like Thanos snaps and everything disappears and <laughs> GBT disappears and powerlifting disappears mm -hmm. and my way of making a living through social media disappears. I can always go back and finish my last two semesters at Penn State mm -hmm. and then go and do a marketing job after that or figure it out after that. I can always do that, but I can't always just leave this job opportunity on pause while I go back and finish. So like, I felt like I was forced into the position in which I took, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? No, yeah, 100%. I mean, it's like Penn State's not going anywhere. No, it's GBT's going to keep on fucking yeah. full throttle ahead. Oh, yeah. And you don't know who maybe fills that role. They might be a fucking killer too, and then and then you're fucked. Yeah, you're fucked. So not to say you know, you know who, who knows like you there, you have enough of a work ethic and like right. kind of that killer mindset yeah. where like you're gonna do well regardless. But this is kind of where you wanted to be. Yeah, you already got it. It's like yeah, maybe you'll just save yourself thirty grand on that last year of college. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, exactly. So, and it's like I didn't want to have to pay that last thirty grand. Yeah. Like why do that? Yeah. Why would I pay thirty no, grand for yeah. a that You're already where use. you wanted to be. Like. I think we talked about it a little yeah. bit beforehand. I that was, the, you know, my input was like, do what you're already doing, man. Yeah. You're doing it. You know, I'm what I mean, you're right already now. doing it. I'm so. doing what I wanted to do. Yeah. You know, like, and no one in college or not a lot of people in college tell you that like it's all about just the connections that you make along the way. Oh yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, if you just uh, if you go to college and you remain a hermit and you don't put yourself out there, get involved and meet new people, and then you just take your classes, go back to your dorm or your or your apartment, and then just do your own thing. You don't meet anyone. You don't make connections. When you graduate, you got a piece of paper and that's all you got. Yeah. You know listen, what I mean? listen to the man speak, y'all. That's all <laughs> I've you I've seen people go got. through four years of college, yo. Never leave a room. Mm -hmm. Never do anything. Yeah. Like. And obviously there's there's degrees in which like if you're like an engineer or you're, you want to be a lawyer or a doctor, like it's important for you to go to college, like obviously. But for a lot of other degrees, it's not about like the piece of paper. It's all about who you know. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Because um, like me knowing the owner of the company that I work for now and me being connected to him through social media and we have the same coach and uh, we all know each other and I was also a previous athlete of the brand as well. Um, me going for that position versus a kid out of Penn State with a marketing degree and nothing else, like he's fucked. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah. Like he's not going to get that position over me. Yeah. So it's all about who you know and like what opportunities open for you down the door, down like the line rather than just the, the paper itself, you know? Very, very true. That's why it's so important to like make, you know, if you're in college, making connections, meeting people, doing things. Yeah. And even, e yeah, even in like a professional setting, like us going and traveling to like this meet or that meet, it's like all about like, who knows what connection you make, which leads to another opportunity. And then you're at that opportunity, you meet somebody else, leads to another opportunity. That's how like all, that's how like the snowball effect, yes. that's what the snowball effect really is. It's like you build momentum by the people you surround yourself with and as those opportunities start to stack up, more opportunities yes. start to stack up. Yeah. It's like you, yeah. people think it's like getting lucky. No, it's no. you're literally making these moves and continuing to move forward and then you meet the right people, more opportunities present themselves, you yeah. take the, whatever the opportunity might be, maybe you don't, maybe you do, but at least other opportunities. Like that's, even from me talking to, much more successful people you know some of my clients are like 
lawyers at the biggest firm, and it's crazy that you kind of brought up the lawyer thing with college. Like they went to college at Harvard, literally one of my clients went to fucking Harvard, Holy but it's hell. like how he got into the law firm that he did is because of some of the people he knew that got him into one of the biggest law firms. Like, so even if you're like doing all the right things educationally, it's all about who you know at the end of the day. Yeah. And like, how do you know certain, like, how do you get to know more people? By doing more things, taking advantage of opportunities, big or small, and you don't know exactly how big or small they may be, but yeah. listen, I, I, Go ahead, I want no, you to. I was going to say, like, the thing you're talking about, like, the momentum, that I think is the biggest thing because that was something that me and Sean would when, – when you had to make that decision, we had that conversation all the time. Like, oh, shit, you're right. He I was, remember that. And, well, actually, I wanted to say something earlier. Like, you were saying, like, you just you, – you had to you, – you skipped the last year, and we were all kind of like, yeah, that makes sense. But – most people, and it's funny because like I'm I'm still at Penn State, Dude, right? No so like a whole bunch no of people come there. to me and ask me about it. No one did about like it's very very clear. Not like ninety percent of the people I talk to, they go, "Why do you do that?" Go, just finish the last year. Like mm-hmm. why didn't you just do? It that? was a very and unconventional like, move for a lot of people who were like stuck on that traditional yeah. like get a get no a four one year believed in me. And then and there, like that. there are the very few feels. people who who go, "Oh, that's sick. That makes sense." And those the people you be like, yeah. Like you gotta remember like, those people no, yeah, yeah, like you gotta yeah. take note of those people. I've actually convinced sure. some people as well that he's made the right decision. Yeah. Oh, like, with the momentum thing, like if he he had just started essentially like he had taken he was obviously growing, but that was like the big step. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. If he had decided to cut that momentum, go back to school and then what, try to nah, try fuck to get that. that momentum again. Like, no, yes, it's the last year of college. Yes, if things go bad, there's no backup plan, but that's the point. Yeah. Get who cares about the backup plan, right? Yeah. Why have the backup plan if you're on, like, it's going perfectly the way you want and then you're going to ruin that to maybe have a backup plan for if it doesn't work? Why not go in there, make it work? Mm-hmm. Make and it, if it fucking work. And if it does, if it re- like you said, like, if everything fails, yeah. then go back to school. But put your back, go into the deep end, put your back yeah. against the wall. You have oh, no yeah. choice but to make it. Yeah. You know what I mean? And some people can't. No. Yeah. I love that. Yeah, that's exactly Listen. right. It's exactly right. Put your back against the wall and you'll see what Listen, you're really made of. When Put I your first... back against the motherfucking wall because sorry, I'm gonna let you go in a minute, no, Jack. I'm cool. so sorry. <laughs> you're you're like, like now having all these like no, 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 thoughts good. about like Damn, good, this is good. Crazy. Ball all up. I'm telling you right now, like you put your back against the fucking wall and just like you said, that's how you see what you're made of. Yeah. Because you fucking sign a lease and that amount of money is due at the end of the month and you got a car note and you gotta pay groceries because you gotta eat. I'm gonna I'm gonna tell you something right now. You're gonna get off your ass because the rent's due at the end of the month. So yeah. you're either gonna make it work or you're fucked. <laughs> the excuses yeah. literally no, don't 100%. matter. It doesn't yeah. matter. There's no excuse. It does not it, matter. It, any excuse you have is to make yourself just feel better. Like, oh, I can't do this because X, Y, and Z. It's like, okay, then X, Y, and Z. Deal with X, Y, and Z and figure it out. Figure like that's just out. how it is. Yep. You know what I mean? Yeah. Oh, but <laughs> listen, no, I'll, I can speak wholeheartedly on that. The way I got it, like the way I got the job at PowerBuilt. Blew my mind. So, fucking, I found a gym on Google. Came in the first time. I couldn't get a membership. It was mad packed. It was, like, at capacity. And when I walked in, I could just see it. It was just hella people trying to train, like, during the pandemic and shit. So, came back once I, like, finished school, got my degree and shit. I think, like, I was working morning shift. So, I wasn't really meeting anybody. And then one night, I came in at night when I got a new job. And I'll never forget, I pulled a 551. Everybody was like, the fuck is this guy? Yeah. And I, everybody was talking to me. I was just trying to meet everybody, see what everybody was about. And then um, that's when I found out about, like, powerlifting, all this kind of stuff. And then at one point, I was at Enterprise, bro. And I was like, bro, I can't stand this shit. Like, I'm like, <laughs> I can't do this shit 12 hours a day, just the same shit, talking to, like, people the same way, using the same lines. And then I was like, and that's when I felt like my back was on the wall. So yeah. I was just starting, like the little, like, the brand I have now. And then I was like, fuck that. I'm out. Like, I straight went to work, put my two weeks in. Yeah, but the next job, thing I was right? like, yeah. everybody was upset with me. My mom airing me out. She's like, why you fuck quit that. that job? Benefits, yep. blah, blah, blah. Yep. I'm like, mom, I wasn't happy. So I left straight up. Like, I was like, I'm going to figure it out. But right now, I was like, I couldn't do that. I end up shooting somebody. Like, yeah, <laughs> just yeah. going through it. And then no, straight up. literally, like, two things happened. So at first, I was like, all right, well, I have a brand. And I was like, let's see how this goes. So I took a chance getting a design made. I made what I make. I made what I made in two weeks at Enterprise, and I think forty-eight hours mm, off the shirts. Hell. And I was like, from that moment on, I was like, I made the right decision. Literally, the next day I went to the gym, 
And I walked in, and I'm, like, sitting at the front desk just, like, talking and shit before I start training. And CT walks up like, you want a job? I was like, <laughs> me? Like, I was like, you, you're, you, like, you're, you're playing with me right now. He yeah. just started laughing. He's like, nah, straight up. I'm like, when do I start? Like, when, like, when do I start? No question. And that's when, like, the, the momentum kind of happened. And like you said, at that point, I was in, like, a dog mentality. Like you said, killer instinct. Like, I had just signed a lease. I quit an old job. I came into a new job. I was like, the same hunger I had that day, the same hunger I have to this day. It's like, I need it right now, yeah. and I need it when I need it. Like, you need so to get it. When I, when, it. I, when I first started talking to my landlord, we have a pretty good connection as well. He was like, yo, look, rent's going to be due this day. I'll be sending that shit early. As soon as I touch the amount of money I need for the rent, I'm Send sending it off. It off. Like, off. yo, I need, like, I need to secure this for the next month, the next month after that. Like, before I went to Houston, I think I paid my rent, like, two times. So, like, I think <laughs> this month, I don't even got to pay shit. I'm like, nah, I need it. Like, I just... Yeah. Once you get the ball rolling, it's like, you can't stop. No. Nah. And then, at some point, it just... It was one of those things where I just stopped thinking about money. I just started hustling. I just yeah. started enjoying that aspect mm-hmm. of it. Uh-huh. And then that kind of rolled into, like, the lifting and all that other kind of right. shit. Like you said, that addicting mindset. When I first came to the gym, they'll tell you, like, I was strong, but I was football strong. So, I wasn't, like... I was... Just, like, when powerlifting was new to me. Right, but, like, right, right. when I came in, I saw everybody working, and I was like, I got to learn this shit. Like, I got to learn how to do this shit. So I was at home, jumping down rabbit holes, trying to figure shit out, how it would work for me. Everybody said, like, you got to figure it the fuck. The best advice I think I ever got from Sean was figure it the fuck out. Dude, figure like, it the fuck literally out. Just, literally, <laughs> and I realized, matters. like, you just got to do this shit a lot <laughs> to figure it out. Like, you figure just got to do it. Like, so... Some days didn't make sense. Some days I was like, shit feel wrong. Yep. I just did it anyway. Because I'm like, at the end of the day, some shit going to click. Some yeah. shit going to make sense. And then around that time, I was still like meeting everybody from the gym. And I remember that 300, that three, that first 300 kg deadlift, that that changed my life. Like that was the moment like it changed. <laughs> and CT said it right after. He was like, I want you to know that after this moment, your life will, will change. Like damn. your life's going to be different. And that's when like. Everything changed. I was like, okay, Unreal, I see it. Man. It was fucking crazy, but yeah, you gotta. When you like you said, listen, you sign that lease, you you pick something up, you back yourself into a corner. That's when you see what you're really about. So the rent is fucking due. Yeah, you see what you're really about. You know what I'm saying that's where that comes from. I think the, the key too is like we've all kind of found something we're passionate about as yeah, well. 100%. It's like, well, like we're yes. not telling you like. Go find something you fucking hate and then like, and then, like dig yourself <laughs> a hole. <laughs> like, force yourself yeah. no, 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 shot. no, 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 no. Find right. something you're passionate about yeah. and be able to make it uh-huh. into something that can provide you, you know, an income, something like that, a network that you can continue to build on. Like you gotta you gotta that's the that's at the bottom line, regardless of what we're all doing, passion's always the thing. That's why like I can be in here for fucking twenty hours a day, just fucking Literally. Listen, whatever I'm in. doing, dragging right equipment in. around, moving shit, trying right to in. whatever I'm doing, it's like I don't even feel like I'm working. You know what I mean? Like no, I am, literally. but it's like I don't think about it that way. I'm not like, oh, I have to do this because it's work. I'm just trying to provide the best possible atmosphere, service, product, whatever it may be within the brand. Listen, and then man. I'll Once, do it, I'll do it whatever I have to take to get there. Mm-hmm. Like All right. twenty Once hours a day, in, it don't matter. I'm about to say there was a day like I'll never forget. Cause people were like, yo, like you're fucking insane. Are we uh this was around the time when we first got all the um the Arsenal equipment in. Yeah. And it was a shit show. Like, the dude... Well, I saw the guy pull up in the 18-wheeler the night before um, because I was training. The Me and CT were just talking about some shit. And then all of a sudden, we wake up in the morning and we're like... They have, like, no assemblers here. So I walk out to the truck, just start talking to the uh, the truck driver. Yeah. He's like, yo, they didn't send nobody with y'all equipment. And then, like, we were oh, like, what the shit. fuck? Like, so CT just happens to know somebody with, like, a forklift. Yeah. No lie. I don't care what Home Depot said at all. I'm I'm forklift certified. Yeah, thank God. Jeff I'm forklift certified. certified that, that. Yo, I was <laughs> moving shit. shit like the pallets were broken. Somehow, still got the stuff off the the truck. Yeah. We were out there. It was like, bro, it was cold as shit. It was raining. We happened to be at the gym from like 10 p.m. or 10 a.m. I'm sorry, till like 2 a.m. in the morning. And like still you said, the, the whole cable time, crossovers together, literally putting every uh, weight on the cable oh, crossover man. like ourselves. Like, Jesus and Christ. the whole time we were there. We're just laughing and shit. Like, yeah, we were tired as fuck, but it's like, it doesn't yeah. feel like work because you yeah. just in there just doing something that you care about. And mm-hmm. then the I feel like the best feeling for a lot of us, like when I come to the gym now, I know like uh, CT's the owner, but when I see people using the cable no, stack, dude. like, man, this shit's fire. I'm like, we put that shit yeah. together. Like, I get the, like, in my head, Dude, I get the yeah. tag in my chest because I'm like, dog, 
this shit was like it takes a lot. Like it yeah. takes a lot with whatever you do. And I feel like being passionate is only going to take you further with your shit. Like right. that's a big reason why like leaving all those jobs I just wasn't fucking with was just like the best decision for me. You're right. And dude, you know what? Like I had a hand in it, but like it wasn't as big a hand as like the other employees because obviously they're paid employees. But like this, like eighteen months ago, like summer of twenty twenty one. We built this gym with our bare fucking our hands. Bare yeah. hands. You were here. Yeah. Sean was in your Mother dragon mask. Dog. Fucking Put bare hands. Hands. Together. hands. Yeah. Like yeah. Um, I had a key to the place to train in here before it was open. Just when there was a couple combo racks, one painted mural, uh, like a kilo bar, and then like a deadlift platform, and that was it. Like Literally, it was just yeah. no other equipment here. I'd have to drive to Conchi to do accessories, but like it was just me with a speaker in here training by myself, and like, dude. Like, to see how it came from, like, that state to, like, where it is now is fucking crazy. Because, like, each step of the way, we were just doing different things. Different things were being different painted. Shit. You know what I'm saying? D- different things were being assembled and whatnot. Yeah. Like, we built that every rubber mat out there. Like, we dragged out there bro, with bare damn, them shit's heavy, y'all. Hands them shit's are heavy, bro. Dude, like, <laughs> like, you think this shit is easy? Like, this man put everything into building this shit everything like put so many hours did so many things himself when like he didn't have to do that you know what i'm saying and like look what it is now you but know that's I mean? the thing though is like how we were talking about kind of like taking opportunities doing different things networking finding the right people none of this could have been built without like literally all the people in this yeah. room right now starting with like pulling fucking 90 pound 100 pound mats across the fucking floor all 400 of them and it's like you don't you don't do that unless you have like people around you who kind of have a similar mindset who want to see kind of like what we now have out there, which is this beast of a gym. Like yeah. you don't like I couldn't. Yeah, like I couldn't have drug four hundred mats cool, across. No. I mean, I think within that it was like that one week we was working. We also ran a meet. That, yeah, yo, we ran a. <laughs> fight. I, I was literally that. yo. Yeah. I, I was that. literally that was my next sentence because literally we had two things happen. Like we literally had the uh, it was like. The open house on Sunday. Yeah. Yo, there was like no fucking equipment in here, I but I promise that. you, it was like a fucking party. Yeah. Like, by the pull ups, I'm pretty sure all the ladies who came to the gym were having like a pull up competition. It was like club power build, right? Holy on the shit. cable stack. And that was before all the Arsenal <laughs> shit came in. Dog, everybody was in there just like, fuck accessories, just lift. Like, whatever yeah. accessories you could do on that one machine, <laughs> do it and then do your compound. Like, yeah. it was the craziest shit. And like yeah, you said, just insane. to see it come from that. So, like, what it is now, monolith, eight combo racks, fucking two cable stacks, a yeah. bunch of machines running up and down the gym. Um, And then the, the craziest shit is, like, I was telling people this, like, and I tell people to watch. Like, anybody who wants to start a business yeah. or run a gym, I say watch CT's page because, like, literally the biggest gym I think you dropped was listening to the fucking community. Because yeah. a lot yeah. of people don't do that. Like, if there's somebody telling you something and you hear that message multiple times, there's literally been there's literally been moments where me and CTR are sitting at the front desk. Somebody just walks up and says, yo, this will be nice in the gym. The man finds it on Amazon, just orders it. Orders it. I'm sorry. And I'm like, you're not going to find that nowhere nowhere else for real, yeah. for real. Like, that's, that's not a thing. Like, it's not Dude, a thing at all. Like, like literally. Yeah, because uh, when we were sophomores at Penn State, we used to train at a gym called East Coast Gym or East Coast Fitness or whatever. Mm-hmm. And it was in a shopping center right a little bit outside of, uh, like, downtown Penn State. And we went there, and we there was, like, a pa- quote-unquote, like, powerlifting gym basement situation going on there yeah. where, like, the upstairs was, like, a commercial, and then downstairs it was, like, a little bit grungier, like, darker aesthetic mirrors. Dungeon shit. platforms, like, one rig, and then, like, two benches. And um, I came to the lady, like, who was managing the place multiple times. And I'm like, hey, like, I would like to uh, put a combo rack in here. Like, I'll pay for it. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm just asking you that I'm allowed to put it down there. And then, like, plates as well if I were to pay for that. And, dude, like, she just completely, no. like, <laughs> she completely no. just shut me down. That's after. corny as shit. That's corny. Like, That's she corny. led me on for, like, six to eight months, making me think it was going to happen. She's like, yeah, I got to make calls. I got to ask around. Who the fuck you got to call, man? She has to call like, corporate bro, or whatever. Bro, what? <laughs> and like she just like led me on for like eight months until she just stopped responding to me. Like are you that's crazy. And it's because yeah, like she funny. obviously just didn't want to deal with it, which I understand.
understand, but like you're not gonna find people that are that passionate. Like there's gym owners that are that passionate about what they do and like making their community happy and whatnot. Like that's not the most common thing ever. You know the dumbest I mean? shit too is like I guarantee if you would have just played it, like if you would have just worded it a little different, she probably would have been all ears. And I was thinking about this. If you would have said something like, "Oh yeah, we want to uh, invest in the gym," like if you would have just said those words instead of like saying you wanted to put equipment in, I guarantee you she wouldn't have had to call nobody. Like if you was willing to hand her some money. She would have been like, oh, yeah, this is amazing. But for the simple fact that you already had the idea of what you wanted to do, yeah. she just, like, shut it down, which is just yeah. it's corny. It's, no, man, look. Did y'all talk about Houston already and the meat and stuff? A little bit. Yeah. A little bit. Not really, though. Not really. Like, we didn't get into it. Yeah. yeah I, you know what I mean? Oh, that, listen. For my first USAPL experience. Damn, it was, was your first USAPL bro, experience. Oh, yeah. Like, number one, I think. The seven, my my favorite moment is seven hundred on the Alico because that was my first time ever pulling on an Alico bar. That was my first time ever training yeah. on one anything. We didn't have them in the warm up room. It was electric, but just the overall just energy of the day. I was running on so much adrenaline, like I just stopped listening to music at one point. Yeah. I was just in the back, just dancing and shit. Like I was like just head nodding, like just cl eyes closed. They were like, "Oh, he in his motherfucking bag." I yeah. was like, "It was a fun meet. That yo, was a fun meet. One hundred percent. I didn't like." There was a lot of things I didn't know what to expect, but like number one, when I, I I will say this, the amount of preparation that went in from that meet since like uh, USPA's drug testing nationals, I feel like I just dropped the ball and I was like, yo, I will never do that shit again. Yeah. Long story short, like when we got to that meet, I just felt like I had a bunch of technical errors that could have been just erased if I just focused a little more. So when we got to uh, corrupt the strength, I was like. I was like, I refuse to drop the ball today. And it was to a point where, like, I was so focused, I just didn't even need music. And then also, too, like, the preparation that went in, I just felt so prepared. I'm like, bro, there's, like, regardless yeah. of what happens, I'm not, I ain't fucking it up today. I was like, uh -huh. that's just how I felt. But the energy, the warm-up room. It was you know, fun. It was that shit fun was, it was good. Houston for the first time. Damn, that was your first time in Houston. Pluckers. Huh? pluckers. Shout out Pluckers. Yeah, shout out to Pluckers. Y'all, y'all held it down with the food. I, been, um, I don't think I've been to Pluckers. Like a wing place, wing bro. Guy I mean, yeah, but like. Pluckers, man. Pluckers, bro. I think Duhan's um, the one that like turned us on to that. Bro, flavors yeah. on flavors. We were flavors. like, where can we get wings? And he's like, Pluckers. So like, yeah. huh. Fire. We're there. Fire. Is it like better than Buffalo Wild Wings? Yeah. It, it, it really? reminds me of like a Buffalo Wild Wings, but just better in every way. Better? Everything's way better. Way over yeah, wing stop. Everything's better. Way over. Oh, my God. Dude, you cannot fuck with lemon pepper. I love wing stop. Yeah, yeah, I love wing stop. Come on now. I'm lemon order pepper that's the only wing that I could rock for. I'm actually for. ordering them tonight. <laughs> order I might order them right now. Yeah, Bro, wing right. stop is the only place I ever order wings, and I had to say, yeah, I want my wings extra wet because they don't give enough sauce. Like, bro, are you kidding me? But Okay, but bro. <laughs> No, they gave yo the yeah. wings were probably yeah. as Did big that? as this no, fucking they, cup. They, like no okay, doubt, okay, bro. Okay. Like All right. it was yeah, good money. Give it a go. Give they had a, go. a burger that was on Texas toast. I didn't get it because of course I didn't want a stomach bomb before the meat. But I'm going back to get it. 100. <laughs> percent <laughs> What are you gonna make the next trip down? Um, Figure it out, bro, because you be ducking. No, no, no. You ducked only <laughs> all summer long. Listen, listen, coming listen, to listen. I said, bro, you have a place Check to this stay. Out. Listen, I know. That's half I the know. cost right there. <laughs> no, for real. <laughs> like, but no, like, honestly, I put, like, so much focus into just trying to just focus on fucking getting ready for the meet. Because I'm yeah, like. Fair enough, fair enough. I, I was it. like, I like, it. when I started seeing, like, okay, I, like, I was blessed to be a part of the meet. But once I started seeing a roster come out, I'm like. Damn, I'm about to be around some big dogs. So I'm like, I got to, like, be on my shit. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. even if, like, the day doesn't go my way, I got to be on my shit to the point where, like, we make game day decisions and it still be a great day yeah, type of yeah, shit. Yeah. So I was so focused over the summertime on just trying to stay healthy. I was going through, like, a bulk from, like, January to August. That was the, bro, not going to lie, that was probably the hardest shit I've ever done. Just, like, eating that much food daily. Like, four meals, probably 4,000 plus calories. My, my uh, metabolism is, like... Quick, so yeah. I had to put the food the fuck down, yeah. and I had to get up. I, I was I had to wake up earlier in the morning, y'all, to eat and get water in, so I could hit yeah, my yeah. mark for the entire day. Like uh -huh. I was like dedicated. So once we got to fucking like October, I was walking around at like two forty. I was probably bloated every day, just mad water on me. Yeah, dude, you were big. And were then big. when I and then when I got like, got to Houston, I like dropped like six pounds of water off, and I was like walking around at two thirty five, two thirty six, and they were like, "Yo, you can just eat whatever the fuck yeah, you want." I'm you like, point, yeah. I was like, "All right, word." And then next thing I know, shout out to I forget who brought the trials, but shout out whoever had the trials, bro. That was, me. That was bro. <laughs> 
Joey's always fucking the man. Yeah, bro, that was my, my first time ever having <laughs> them. Them shits changed the game. Wrong, yes, yeah. bro. Yeah. That shit changed the game on me. That no cramping. I had I didn't even have to use the bathroom that much. That's how I knew I was like perfectly hydrated. Like yeah. I didn't have too much water in me. I didn't have too small amount of water in me. It was a solid day. But yeah, it was a lot going on that day, a lot of energy. The women good. the women of USAPL, I did not know y'all got down like y'all are strong as shit. That was yeah, some- that was a competitive more like I I started watching the the women's side of the meet a little late because I like just woke up just like ready to prepare for like what yeah. I had going on. Yeah, dog. Some of the fucking squat, the third squats and the third deadlifts. I was like, y'all squat more than my homies at home. Yeah, like it was. It was yeah, a whole different ball me. game. Like I was like, like me, me too, yeah. Joe. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I was yo. Like, <laughs> but yeah, man, it was it was definitely an experience. I'm glad I got to compete in that meet. It just prepared my like prepared me mentally more than anything for what's to come. Yeah, yeah. Fucking training, all that kind of stuff. I gave myself the month of November off. Like uh-huh. I still been training and shit, but as far as like the mental part, I'm like just going to gym, just like make sure you're hitting what you need to hit. And I ain't gonna lie, I've been on my road bound shit all month. I've been skating and shit. Like right after we do this podcast, Active what time recovery. is it? Yeah, like I'm skating right after we leave here. So all right, like, all right, we gotta wrap this up. Yeah, no, nah, no, nah, I'm glad I came to vibe. Minutes, but one thing, as long as you guys got like five minutes, I figure this podcast is gonna come out in the next week or two. We're coming up on the new year to kind of leave off on a good note. What are you guys looking forward to with the new year? Maybe some type of plans i know we're all plotting maybe we don't want to give certain things away but like Ooh. give me something that you're excited about for 2023 <laughs> oh could be man. quick it could be quick we don't need to get I'm fucking just, I'm into just excited. it i'm just excited to train throughout the whole year because as of now I, I don't plan to compete in 2023 so i plan to come into 2024 with like a serious total just fucking like serious nasty total. yeah yeah like 950 i like that <laughs> i like that mid uh low to mid nines uh-huh. yeah Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Been nines. All right, what about Joe? What you got? Big Dude, plans? Yeah, I think next year will be good because that's, I mean, I graduate college. Um, Hell yeah. Yeah, I think, I mean, as of now, the plan is stay here the summer mm-hmm. and then come August, September, I think I'm going to make the move to Houston. Fucking A. Yeah. <laughs> Losing another yeah, one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the, the videos will keep coming. Yeah. Um, I'm going I'm to be building. And we'll we'll see where I'm at a year from now. Hell yeah. yeah. We're gonna now you put it out there, dude. So you better fucking deliver. Because yeah. you fucking put it out there yeah. on the internet now. That's right. Yeah, so yeah. if Just you don't make it happen, look. you're gonna get clowned. Got receipts. No, look. yeah. Look. <clears throat> the receipts are here. 100%. If I fail on it, call call me. <laughs> no, I'm gonna call you out. I'm, we'll not, you I'm out. not worried about it, all right? <laughs> I want it. I want it. This is it. Yeah, man. How about what you, you got, got, Jeff? What you got? I got I'm probably three or four keywords. So we got uh eighteen hundred plus. Whatever you do with that is whatever you do. I'm gonna just lead at um events. Surprisingly, coaching man has been like taking off. Like I'm I remember when I first was trying to coach and C T was like, I was like, C T I don't think I'm cut out for this shit. And he's like, You've been playing sports all your life, bro. You're gonna be good. Next thing I know, three clients turn to ten, ten turn to twenty. So that's another one. And then Events and movies. Next year is we're shooting movies. It's no more just videos. We're shooting movies. Like yeah, we're going to need Joe Wee for that. Not bro. Yeah, pay the invoice. I'll be here. Listen, pay the invoice. Yeah, one hundred percent. But movies. Houston, movies. bro. The next time I go to Houston, movie. Crazy movie. Oh my goodness. Insane. Yeah, we'll yeah. have to go back soon. Well, it, I, gotta, I gotta visit more of those year. gyms, yo. Yeah. Some of them gyms, y'all. Was, I was kind of hating because I'm like, damn, I can't even train because I gotta be ready for this. Yeah. But that one gym, like, I didn't even get a chance to go to Corrupted. But that damn, other bro, thing, bro, I didn't, bro. I'm, I'm hurt. What? There's always hurting. opportunities to go yeah. down. Yo, honestly, always. Honestly, you just you made me you like remind me of something. I'm gonna just plug myself real quick. Yeah, I've been, I've been me personally. I've been powerlifting for like. six Six or seven years. Oh, gee. I've been coaching for free for the past three years. You are around bro. 10 clients. Next year, I think I'm fully opening up spots. Look, like I like it. Public, so. I like it. Get with him. I, I can recommend Joe as well. I've seen this motherfucker put in the work, real experience, real knowledge, been doing it. Yeah, yeah. And Jeff. Yeah. It'll be good. Dude, Joe helps me with my training all the time. Like, he helps me navigate fatigue, navigate certain situations, meet day scenarios. Like, he knows a shit. So, take with that what you will. You you did yeah. your first powerlifting meet how long ago? Uh, six years ago? 2016. That's what I mean. So, like, real yeah. experience. No, real yeah. Experience. Well, like, me, I, I just played football and had pretty good coaches. I had solid coaches growing up. So I, like, yeah. I think I've competed in 
six or seven meets and I've handled probably like 20 plus. Oh yeah. yeah. Um, I've, I've handled Sean for, I've been, I, except for the iron side. You know what's I've funny? Been, I've been at every single meet. Every single meet he's been yeah. at, I've done well at. Yeah. And, and that uh, was the one meet you felt like the you did one meet I, I shit the bed and uh, <laughs> I embarrassed myself. Uh, he wasn't there. Yeah, I wasn't there. So who knows what would happen if he was there. No, be there. So that's why if, if he's with me, I'm so like. There's a skill there. to handling on meet day, dude. It's he, like but he knows it's me not, very well. Yeah, and it's not just being able to make the right call weight wise. It's like understanding the psychology of Everything. how to like keep a lifter like even keel and like yeah, yeah. focused. Like, yeah, yeah. there's a lot and to also, that. A, a big lot. thing is like let like. My biggest thing is always like the lifter. Everything kind of focuses on the lifter. Like they need to be in their optimal place. Mm. I will handle everything else. Yeah. Like, don't worry about like when. Like I, I think when we like first started to like Sean would get kind of antsy and like start looking at the time or whatever like flights or even other athletes that I handle for like they start doing that I'm like dude stop like yeah. I'm watching it yeah. you sit there get in your own head and think yeah. about the next weight you're gonna hit right? no 100 percent don't don't be worried about that I will yell at you if you yeah. do that yeah <laughs> yeah no for sure and you could always tell too like the people that know what they're doing handling wise because like i'll be at big meets and i see like these coaches who are supposed to be high level and they're fucking running around frantic i'm like you're making me panic motherfucker <laughs> like oh, I literally let like, alone it's your actually lifter, crazy like, yeah. and i think that's even crazy like as coach and handle like you have to be poised for your client yeah, like because yeah. like if you like go out there in the second attempt it's like some shit just happens you can't trip out like no, you, you can't, can't react as a lifter anymore yeah, you gotta yeah, like yeah. okay Let's put the next attempt. Like, you got to, like, be there. Be very objective. You very get objective. what I'm saying? Like, yeah, you got to really use your brain. Because, yeah. like, if you hit a second attempt and you or your coach gets hype and you fucking send it, and it's like, you could lose pounds on the total that day for that. Like, if you send it, you could have, like, went for a more considerate number that day. It's like, uh-huh. the object is to build a total. Yeah. Build a fuck total. the one rep PR. Like, fuck the all-time PR. Yeah. But, like, you want to build the total. So, it's like small shit like that where you got to make, like, those calls and make your, like, mm-hmm. gut hurt. Like, like fuck Dude, this. Yeah. Just do or die right now. Uh-huh. And you just yeah. got to trust the preparation you guys have put in. It's yep. crazy. It's a whole different ball. You got to trust the people around you, yeah. dude. Like, yeah. the reason why I'm so confident meet that is because, like, I really think I have the best team behind me. Like, yeah. The best. Like, obviously, yeah. if my coach is there, like, Joey Flex, like, he's the one that got me to where I am. I wouldn't have anything I have without for him. But then on top of that, like, Joey has been there at every single meet I've done. And yeah, he's, bro. he's led me to the best performance possible. He's always there. He gets me anything I need. He helps me out in any way. And then on top of that, like, my other two good friends, Grant and Steve, like, they're at the smartest. And, like, they're hey, look. one of the smartest powerlifters and coaches ever. And, like, they know how to navigate every situation. They know any number to call. They know how things move. They know any – like, they know everything about Listen. me and meet day yeah, performance yeah, yeah. and anything. Shout out, So, like, Grant. that's why when I'm with them, like, if you have the best coaching staff around you, like – you like you feel unbeatable you know what i'm saying like you can just like you're in the right hands and like you only have to focus as just a lifter nothing Listen, else shout out grant shout out forklift billy <laughs> if it wasn't for bill i'm telling y'all right now probably through that day i would have been hydrated he said yo do you need anything on the day i said yo just remind me to chug that fucking gallon right there this man tapped me about 40 times during the meet like yo drink that i'm like you that guy for real? Cause I was for, I was too I was so focused on like just adrenaline. When I was going next, I was just like focused on everything that I needed to be focused on, and he just reminded me of that. And then shout out Grant because he was the main person behind like making sure I started warming up on time. Cause I promise you, lifting cast was not my best friend that day. I was trying my best, y'all, but that <laughs> shit was not working. And my phone wasn't updating. And my mu- only thing that was working that day was my music, straight up. Dude. So. Shout out those guys because it was it was a it was a very very smooth day. It's mm-hmm. Very smooth. You gotta have a good team. Gotta you know, have you know what's so team. funny? Like after being at so like after being at so many local meets and after being at so many national meets with this kid and like him being like he, he fucking winning shit whatever. Like when I go back to the local meets, like I I just think I'm better than everybody. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I don't give a fuck. Oh, hey, hey, I don't holy give a fuck. Shit. Like, like yeah, yeah. two weeks ago, like I'm at a meet like. If I, if I want to rack, I'm like, all right, my guy's getting in here. Like, no, there's yeah, no yeah, more yeah. like that. Like, uh, yo, like, can I, can I get in here? Like, um, no, my, it's like, nah, my there guy's should getting be like in here. One right, right, handle like, like, one right over here. else wants to go. I'm like, all right, my guy's going first. You might like, end up taking like, over yeah. the rack. I'm like, no, like, yeah, yeah. Like, no, dude, guy knows everything. Listen, I'm not going to lie though. Sometimes, sometimes at a meet, like, shout out to Corrupted Strength for the meet they put on because they had it very set up to where like they even had the warm up room organized. So like, the guys you were warming up with were the guys you were in the same flight with. That's the first time I've seen that. That's a very I did. I think thing. a like lot of people that. need to take consideration. Like, needs to do that. One hundred percent. And then we were when we were in there. There was like there were 
coaches, and then there were coaches, like yes. people who were yes. back there, like my lifters right here next. Put one red on the fucking bar. Like, you need that because sometimes, bro, the indecisive shit in the back, then all of a sudden your lifter is warming up. He's taking his last warm up a minute out before he yeah, goes. And yeah. it's like, yeah, what? that's fucked. Like, you can't do that to your lifter. So that's sometimes insane. it takes, like, yo, like, if the lifter doesn't have that decisiveness or, like, that that state of mind, sometimes it's like, yo, I need my lifter to warm up right now. Get him on there. He yeah. needs to take one red, three reds, whatever the fuck he needs to take. Yeah. And then he's on the platform next. Like, because some of the people back there, I'm not going to lie, even with it being, like, organized, some people were still back there, like, twiddling their fucking thumbs. Yeah, it's like, like well, enjoying the moment. Joe saying, like, uh, at the local meet, you were just probably more assertive. Mm-hmm. And what happens is it actually makes the day smoother, smoother. for everyone. Because yeah, really oh you can kind of, like, command the rack a little bit. Yeah. It's not even, like, in a disrespectful way. Yeah, it's yeah, just yeah. literally, it's like, it's, it's not. being assertive. Like, exactly, it's like, This yeah. is how, like, my guy is bef- my guy's before you on the flight. You understand where they're – Exactly. Yeah, you have like, more time. You can kind of call, like, oh, who's who got next? Anyone yeah. else need two yeah, reds? Yeah, yeah. Like – Otherwise, everyone's kind of looking around like yeah, literally, right, like exactly. literally. I think they all buy into that. And yeah. Like, like, okay, like he's running. Same thing, bro. Like, it's the like, same shit with yeah. spotting and loading. Shout yeah, out yeah. all the good spotters and loaders yeah, out there. Yeah, like, yeah. you have yeah. somebody out there that like knows what the fuck's going on, how to load the weights. All they gotta do is make the calls and just follow the directions. It makes it easier on the day. Yep. Fucking platforms takes move the solid. out of it. All that man makes yeah. it a smoother 100%. day for everyone. So I'm I'm not like a very conf- I'm not always, like for me at least I'm not very confrontational, but I will never forget. It was the teen nationals that you did. Oh yeah, <laughs> I went to a rack, and it was it was like the fl- it was the best it was the best rack because it was like flat platform, best combo rack. Um, and a guy was there, and I went up, and I'm like, "Yo, can my guy work? Uh, it's like warming up on here." And he was like, "Um, I don't really know." I'm like, "Why?" He's like, "My my guy over- my guy squats kind of a lot. Like he's gonna go heavy." I'm like, "Okay, what's he squatting?" He's like, "Um." I think he might end around like 600 or so. I was like, okay, my guy's opening at like 660, so he's getting on the rack. Yeah, <laughs> he was, he was like, oh, okay. and then it turned out the dude was like like a super heavyweight, like a clip lifter or whatever. Yeah. And I was just like, dude, like get out of here. Yeah. And something else, like when you won your first collegiate, I think, yeah, another kid came up to me and was like, started like muttering under his breath, and I'm like, would you say? Like, oh yeah, like, I remember that. that was when you, Grant, and Paul were on that yes, platform. Yes, you were the heaviest I'll, squatters in the fight. I was literally like. I have the top three on on this platform. Like, what are you saying to me right yeah, now? Yeah. Like, get away. A lot of times, this is inexperience. Like, a lot of times, the problems will come from some of the handlers or coaches that are inexperienced. They don't understand, yeah, yeah. like, kind of how to, like, keep a flow, keep people together who are the same height so you're not adjusting the rack as much, keeping people together who are in the same part of a Skills. flight. Yeah. yeah, there's just a lot to it that – a good handler can uh, make your day a lot smoother. So Listen, I, I don't want to segue underrated. into another yeah, topic. Way underrated. I don't even want to segue into another topic because this one is a one where we could just roll out and just talk about it forever. Yeah. But the uh, the amount of like weird comments on meet day at Corrupt- at the Corrupted Shrimp Classic, it was like I'm I should have kept my headphones in, bro. What do you mean? Like I don't even know if Weez knows this. I pretty I thought I told him, y'all. Yo, Sean, you were like standing somewhere, bro, and I was sitting down just rocking to my music. Yeah. I believe somebody walked up to you and literally sniffed you oh my God. at the meet. You're lying. I'm so serious. I would not lie to you about it. It was insane, bro. I literally had to take a second. Bro, the, twi- the Twitch. I told you about the Twitch shit. I told you about that shit. I showed you. Yeah. yeah. Like He sent it to you, and I was like, low key. I- he sent it to me, too, and I was like, I'm not even going to say anything while we're like about to compete. I was yeah. cracking up, though. I was like, yo, this shit is insane. People bro. are fucked. <sighs> bro, when I tell you it was so strange, and then, like, shout out Dion, too, because this was funny as shit. Me and Dion shout were talking, Dion, man, and some kid just walks up, and he's like, yeah, Dion, remember my name coming for you. And Dion, the first Dion said the funniest shit. He was like, "Bro, how the fuck you gonna tell me to remember you? You didn't even say your name." Like it was the <laughs> top ten moments out there. It was so funny, bro. <laughs> we had name. a whole conversation about it, bro. I was cracking up because I'm standing next to him. I'm just like, "What's up with you, bro?" Blah blah. blah. Kid just walks up, just starts talking. I'm like, "Yo, you know him?" Like he like, I could just tell the energy. Yeah. Like weird. nobody knew the kid. I'm like, Yeah. Like, what's no, going that on? actual same kid uh, said something to me as I was walking up for awards ceremony. Strange. Strange. He said like, "You're gonna know my name one day." Like, like say your name. Like, say your name. Like literally, like he was the fucking little guy from the Incredible. You, know, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? He became the evil guy at the end. You know what I'm, so, you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, bro. It was, it was like that shit. It was he like, dude. It, it for a while. Yeah, I was walking and he said it. And I like looked back and he and I was like, what? And then he said it again. And I was just like, okay, I bet. And then I just, had to <laughs> I was just like, like I said, I didn't want to, I didn't yeah. want to use that this segue because like, bro, this this is like regular occurrence now and it's insane. Yeah, it's just. 
Shit like that happens all the time. All the time. Well, then. Very Shit's weird. weird. But yeah, I feel like we could literally keep going. But no, let's yeah, this wrap, is, let's is this wrap the longest podcast? This is not the 100. longest. Sawyer was on a fucking rampage once, I think. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the longest, right? Wait, wait, what was he talking about? Uh, we were, we got in, I mean. Rabbit hole. Building oh, gyms, picking up equipment, pre-workout, uh, the way he used to eat when he was in high school, which is just absurd. Yeah. Oh, man. He, yeah, Sawyer's we, a funny kid, We man. could go on for days and days with yeah. him. <laughs> no, Sawyer, yeah. 100%. Appreciate you guys coming on. Sean Appreciate again, you having Joe. Yeah, great you having, having me. Yeah. Do we? Appreciate Always being fun. back, man. Yeah, yeah. I know. And, right? uh, yeah, you, you'll see these guys back, obviously, some of the homies. So if you guys want to follow them, at Wee's on all of the platforms, right? Yes, sir. What yeah. about you, Joe? Just Joe underscore we underscore. There we go. That's Dewey it. Dewey Jeff. Dewey Jeff. Y'all know what it Dewey is, Dewey motherfucking Jeff. Easy enough. Make sure you like the damn podcast. Subscribe if you haven't. Hit us with a comment. Share with your friends. Do all the damn things. We'll see you in the next one. Peace. 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 Hey, that was a good episode. That was happy good. Happy hour. Happy hour. That was easy. Like that was. That was so easy. Yeah, that was like.